Hi everyone, today we're going to be looking at the acids and alkalis topic and looking at your neutralisation, so what happens when an acid and alkali mixes. In this video we're going to cover the pH scale, have a quick recap of that, what a neutralisation is and then looking at what an alkali is compared to something called a base. And I don't mean drop the base, I mean as in something that is a base. So grab some paper and a pen and take some notes with me. Okay, before we delve into what happens in neutralization, it's really important that we just go back and have a look at the pH scale to make sure they're absolutely happy with what an indicator is, what the pH scale tells us about substances, and just get your head around it. So when I talk about things like pH 7 and this substance will go red, you know what I'm talking about. Right, because I'm not at school and I don't have my usual newfangled technologies with me like a printer, what I've got to show my pH scale is some of my colour pens. Luckily, I had enough. If you remember well, from what we did at school, the pH scale tells us how acidic or alkali a substance is. And the thing that makes the pH scale really cool, in my opinion, is the fact that it has just so many colours, like an entire rainbow, so you can be really specific with how strong an acid or how strong an alkali you've got. If you've got, you know, three clear liquids in a, in a load of beakers, and you know only one of them is water, you could use this to test which one's the acid, which one's the alkali, or which one was a stronger acid than the other. Okay. So, the pH scale, we're going to start at 1, that's the lowest you can get, so this is the strongest acid. pH 1 through to pH 6 are all acids, however, not all acids are equal. The strongest acids are the first three pHs, so 1, 2 and 3. These would all be classified as strong acids. So this is things like lemon juice, vinegar, hydrochloric acid you get in a classroom etc. After that you've got some more acids. You can see here we're starting to go from deep reds through oranges into the yellows and very slightly greens. So these three here are still acids but they are what's classified as weak acids. Okay in the middle you have pH 7 which is green usually. If you're using universal indicator in school, universal indicator is usually green because it's a number of indicators that have been mixed together in water and because pH uh, 7 is the same as the pH of water, it's green. So 7. So when we look at the term neutral, this means it's not an acid or an alkali. Okay, going into the alkalis now. The first three alkalis, pH 8, 9 and 10, are sort of a bluish greenish colour, sort of getting into your blues, and these are our weak alkalis. And then the last of the pH scale is 10 to 14, and those are your strong alkalis. So this would be, you know, bleach household cleaner etc. Right, we're going to have a look at neutralisation itself now. Neutralisation is just a reaction when you mix an acid and a base together, or an acid and an alkali together. Okay, it's important to think here and use a bit of logic. If you had a very strong acid, say something that was pH 1, and you mixed it in with a weak alkali somewhere around pH 9, even if you had the same amount, so the same volume of those two acids, they wouldn't necessarily make a neutral solution. So this equation only works if both the acid and the alkali are of similar or the same strength. We can look at a few examples. So say for example, uh, you are doing an experiment at school, you are given a beaker that contains a substance that turns your indicator red. So that would tell you that it was probably around pH 1 or 2. And say you're given 100 millilitres of it in a beaker. Let's make that acid not defy gravity. 
what you'd imagine then is you had a smaller beaker with say 10 mils of a substance that's turned your pH indicator purple. I want you to pause and have a guess what colour do you think it would go? Is it going to, they are the same strength, is it going to neutralise and turn it green? Do you think it would stay in uh, you think it would stay in acid? Do you think it will become all the way across and become an alkali? Just have a think of it for a second. Okay, what would actually happen is this red substance, because you're only adding 10 million, even though they're the same strengths, you would still come out with something like this, a uh, acid, but it'd be slightly weaker. So I would imagine if we were adding 10 mils, we'd probably end up somewhere in the sort of three or four region. If we kept adding to the 10 mils, 10 times, so we had 100 millilitres of each. So if you did that once, you'd get orange. If you did that nine more times, then you would end up with your neutral solution because you've added the same quantity of acid to alkali. Okay, let's look at a specific example of something neutralizing. Uh, let's look what happens when you add copper oxide. Things that are made up of metal are usually uh, alkali. So this is our alkali. If you add that to some hydrochloric acid, clues in the name, this one's the acid. It's the same acid that is in your stomach, actually. So if we add these two together, they will neutralize to make a neutral compound, a neutral substance that is called copper chloride. And you also make a little bit of water as well. Copper chloride, this will be neutral and water, as we know, is also neutral. So we're having an acid plus an alkali makes a neutral solution. You can actually do an experiment to test this out and back when we get back to school, we will try this out for ourselves. But what I want you to do for now is just to get yourself familiar with it. In your notes, just write down with me this little step-by-step -step guide of how you could make your own, what we call the substance here. It's got a special name, a salt. So, here we go. First thing you do, you should have a beaker. You'd have a small amount of this copper oxide. Copper oxide is usually like a dark green color, almost sort of a bluey green. And you would add that into a uh, beaker with some hydrochloric acid in. What you do then is you would mix those together and you'll see that the copper oxide will dissolve into that acid and start to neutralize. Uh, so you'll end up with a sort of bluey solution as that copper oxide is dissolved in it. What you do then is the fun part. You would tip, you'd have to filter out the sort of excess bits of copper oxide that are left over and into a nice new beaker you'd have some beautiful clear blue copper oxide solution and you'd just be left behind with all the bits of copper oxide that we don't need or that didn't dissolve. Lastly the really fun bit you could do this two ways you could either have a little dish with your solution in and leave that in a sunny place for a couple of days. What will happen is the water will evaporate.
and it will leave behind these lovely, beautiful blue copper oxide crystals. Or you could put the evaporating basin over a Bunsen burner and boil that water off and you'd still get your copper oxide crystals but they wouldn't be as big. So here we've got our acid plus an alkali makes a, if you were to add indicator to this, it would turn green. So a neutral substance. This substance is called a salt if you've um, done it with a metal and you get some water, which again is neutral. Right, last bit, not gonna take very long, is what the difference is between something called an alkali, which you should be familiar with, and something called a bass. Now, if you think about bass, you probably think about music, dropping the bass, um, but in here, it's still talking about alkali. So an alkali is basically a base that is dissolved in water. And a base is any substance that can neutralize an acid. So you can have solids that if you put into hydrochloric acid would neutralize it, so, but it's not necessarily a liquid. So any substance, that can neutralize an acid. You probably got some bases at home, like Rennie tablets, for example. You know, those tablets you take when you've had a bit of a dodgy curry in your tummy, you got a bit of heartburn. Uh, you've got baking powder, that's a base as well. That will neutralize an acid. You probably think of the uh, that old chestnut, the experiment where you have your paper mache volcano and then you've got some food colouring and in some vinegar and then you put it into a little well that you've made and uh, you've got baking powder inside you pour it in and you sort of lava fizzles everywhere and everyone goes ooh isn't that very exciting okay that's it for today what I want you to do now is just go back through the video if you've missed anything make some notes then pause this video go back to Google Classroom and have a go at the quiz quiz questions will also appear on this video as well at the end so you can you know jot your ideas down on a piece of paper and then use those ideas to fill in your Google Classroom form I will see you soon. Uh, next time I'm due to have you, we'll look at uh, oh, we'll look at copper oxide and copper sulfate reactions and making more salt. So that'd be good. Uh, and your extracurricular work today is to make sure you do something nice for someone in your family today, especially if they're feeling unwell or they're a bit bored from being isolated. See you soon.